G'day guys and welcome to me lab. Now in this particular episode, whilst I know I promised we'd be doing secret passages, a few bugs have come to my attention and we need to get those fixed. So we're going to make sure that when we pick up some ammo, if we've already run out of ammo, it switches back to the last gun that we were holding, as well as a couple other minor details. And then if we've got the time, we're going to throw in some sound effects for our guns. So let's uh, have a look at our WWSS. Rightio, so a quick recap. Well, we have got a basic game ready to go already. You can Effectively play it, but we've still got some improvements to make. So we do have those scores and lives and weapons and ammo and all that, but we got some improvements to happen today. But what improvements am I talking about? Where we're going to add some sound effects and fix up some bugs that have been brought to my attention. Why? Well, to make our game more engaging and more playable. The skills you will need for this one, where you're going to need to understand and apply how to use scenes, scripts, and nodes. And success today will look like you having gun sounds, and also when you pick up ammo, if you've run out, it's going to actually re-load um, up your last held weapon if you were on the knife, right? So when you pick up some ammo, instead of it just staying on the knife, we go back to whatever uh, weapon we had before. Before we get knee deep into today's tutorial, there is one extra line of code you need to add into your player script in order to make sure when we uh, respawn, we respawn with some health. So if you jump into your player script, find that damage function and go down to where we've got that get tree change scene to file line. Underneath that, just add in this line here, global.playerhealth equals 100. And that will just make it so whenever you respawn, you get your health back rather than respawning on zero. All right, let's get into today's tutorial. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, start working on our gun changes when we uh, pick up the ammo. So that was the big bug that I wanna fix, right? When we pick up an ammo satchel, if we've run out of bullets, it doesn't actually default back to the last gun we had. So we're gonna add in a little bit to work that out. First thing we wanna do is jump into our global script and then in in our global script, we are going to just add in one more line. So underneath our current weapon, we're going to go var last weapon like that. And we're going to set that to the same thing as what our current one is. Um, and that just gives us another variable that we can use to handle the logic around what our last gun was and things like that. That's actually all we're going to do in our global script. So you can save that one. Let's, uh, let's go to our ammo script now, I think is where we want to do. So this is what our ammo script looks like at the moment. We've basically just extended our area 3D and then we've got this on body entered function. So when we interact with the uh, the area 2D or 3D that we've set up, it um, can trigger different things. So that's what's happening here. It's checking first to see if the player is what's entering that area. If it is the player, we're gonna add 10 to our global ammo. We're gonna just print that. That doesn't actually matter. In fact, we're probably getting to a stage where we can get rid of some of these print statements because you guys are probably getting your heads around all this and you don't need all that extra stuff getting in the way. So let's just get rid of that and let's get rid of that. I reckon you all understand this by now, right? So this is what it says at the moment. So if the body that has entered our area is in the group player, we want to give the global ammo an extra 10 and then delete that from the scene. Now, we've got to change this up a little bit. So what we want to do is also um, have a go at changing our global uh, current weapon. So we can do that this way. So uh, global dot current weapon and what are we going to do we're just going to make it equal to global dot last weapon like that so now what we're saying is essentially if we grab 10 more um, ammo if you know what we've got at the moment is the knife essentially well we're going to change that to whatever our last weapon was and we never actually save the knife as our last weapon. So it's always gonna be the gun, the machine gun, or the minigun. All right, that's all I wanna do there in our ammo. So make sure you've saved that. Cool. Now let's go, where should we go next? Uh, maybe to our minigun, because um, we're gonna to have to work our way through a few. Oh, actually machine guns next on the list, isn't it? That would make a lot more sense. All right, so we've got our machine gun in front of us. Let's get rid of some of our um, comments just to make it cleaner. Oops. Doesn't help if you delete your actual code. Alrighty. Why did everything get undo when I did that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right. So if body's in group player, current weapon, uh, global current weapon equals machine. So you can guess what we're probably going to do here. We're just going to add in. We don't need to print that anymore. So let's get rid of that. So now we're going to go global dot last last weapon equals machine. 
as well. So what we're doing is just making sure that when we um, pick up that machine gun and we set our current weapon to machine, we're also setting that other variable we made to machine as well. So save that and you can probably guess what we have to do in the minigun, right? Click on our minigun. Let's clean it up just like we did there with the other one. And then in here, we're just gonna go global dot last weapon equals mini just like we did before. All right, and that's that one saved as well. So that's all the work we really need to do in those, I think. Let's just give it a test, see how, uh, see how right I am because I have a bad memory. So we want to actually essentially run out of bullets and then when we pick up some more ammo, it should give us back whatever gun we had last. So I'm just going to pick up our machine. Actually, I'll pick up our minigun because that'll make it a lot easier for me to get rid of these bullets. Probably should have changed this variable to 10 to save some time, but you know, live and learn. Do, 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 19, and there we go. All right, so we're down to our knife now. That's all we got. So let's pick up this ammo satchel and see if that code worked. Hey, back to our minigun. All right, so that's that problem solved. Sweet. Next thing we're going to do is work on our sound effects. We want this to start getting some sound effects. I'm only going to do some gun ones. If you want to get some other ones in there, like when you get hit, I want you to think about how you're going to do that. We'll cover it a bit later on, but for today, all we're doing is adding in some shooting sounds, basically. And at the moment, only when our player shoots. It's easy enough to add these into our enemies as well, but let's just focus on what we're doing. So let's get rid of this window. We don't need it anymore. What we do need are some sound files so if you jump over into itch or if you're doing this in the OneNote, have a look down where you can find the resources um, and also if you just grab the whole thing off of github the sound files will be in there right but on itch there should be three new ogg files one for the gun one for the minigun one for the machine gun they're what we're going to bring in so i'm going to grab those now i've got them sitting locally here i'm just going to drag them into godot above me ed they then get um, added in like that. That's that's just done. We don't have to stress about it. All right, so what we want to do now is most of this next work is going to happen in our player script because that is where the action happens effectively with all of our handling of um, shooting and all that sort of stuff. So we want to grab our player script. There it is there. I'm just going to make the code a little bit smaller because these files are very big and I want to see as much as I can as possible on the screen. All right, so extends character body 3D. Uh, none of those need to change. That ready function is fine. Our physics function is fine. Get rid of some more um, comments because they are starting to add up and get in the way. All right, where is our shooting function? All right, here we go, down here, our shoot function. We're gonna need to add a whole bunch of stuff um, in front of this ray collider stuff. So I'm just gonna make some space here, okay. And I think that's the only section we're gonna be working in. So if we've got our player selected, we're gonna to need to do some code, but we also need to add in an audio stream player because that's gonna handle this for us. So let's just quickly grab our um, players. Uh, what am I doing? Let's grab our player scene. No, 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 no. There it is. All right, player scene. I wanna add an audio stream player. So I'm gonna click on my player root node. I'm gonna click the plus next to the scene and I'm gonna search for audio audio stream player, add it in like that. I'm not gonna do anything else to it, I'm just gonna add it at this stage, that's it. So we've just thrown it in there, sweet. So now let's play around with our shoot function. Now there's a bit to go in here, so I'm just gonna grab all the stuff that's gonna go in in front of that um, colliding stuff, right? So I'm gonna put that in here, here we go. So what are we doing? We've got our new variable we're starting, which is called sound player, and that is that audio stream player. Now I've said this a few times, but I always find it's good to go over this again. Why was that green thing with the dollar sign looking like that? Well, if we just grab this dude here and just drag it over, that's exactly what it looks like. All right, so our, we're just creating a little shortcut so we don't have to drag that in every time. Um, we're gonna match our global current weapon, gun machine or mini to our sound. This is very similar to what we did for the sprites and stuff if you remember in our UI, where's that? This one here. See, match global current weapon and that's our fire rate stuff. So we're doing a similar thing here in our player. We're gonna go match global current weapon, duh, duh, duh. then we're gonna go sound player, which is this shortcut that we made up here, right? So we're gonna say, if the gun is the current weapon, then the sound that we wanna play is gun.ogg, which we just dragged in over here. Um, now, if you're filing these things away nice and neatly, which is a good idea, but I haven't done that because I didn't want to overcomplicate things. Maybe you've got like sounds, like a folder where you're putting your sounds or something. It would be like that. But for me, I've just dragged it straight into the, um, the base directory. So it just goes like that. 
Um, so let's just make sure we understand what we're doing. So function, shoot, all right, that was already there. All we're doing is adding in this section here to handle our sound effects. So new variable for our audio stream player, then we're gonna use this match like we did before for our global current weapon. If it's the gun, the sound we wanna play is gun. If it's machine, the sound we wanna play is machine. If it's mini, the sound we wanna play is mini. Yes, we probably need a knife in there too, some sort of grunting sound. You can work that out yourself if you want to. You could even record your own grunting sound, really, and use that if you didn't want to find one online. Let's save this and see if everything works, hey? So save that, press play. My problem here is always that I'm not very good. Hey, hear that? It's sounding all right. Let me grab a machine gun, see if this one works. So far, so good. And what about a minigun? I'm loving what we got going on, guys. All right, I think that's it. Let's have a look at our must, may, might to make sure we don't forget anything. And you guys can jump in and start getting some bugs fixed and some sounds happening. All right, our must, may, might. What you must get done, you've got to fix the code to enable your last gun to automatically switch when you pick up the ammo. And you need to add SF. X to your gun. Uh, what you might like to do is keep it on making more detailed and difficult levels and connecting them all up. And what you might consider, this is what we were going to do this week, but it's going to be next week now, you might consider how you would add in secret passages. Wolfenstein 3D has tons of them. How would we do that? Alrighty, we're getting to the end. You know, only a few more apps until I think I'll cut you guys loose on this one. But uh, we pretty much have a template that you could use to make your very own FPS now. Next time we will get around to those secret passages. And the quote I'd like to leave you with this week is from none other than Mark Twain. And he once said, give every day the chance to become the most beautiful day of your life. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.